circle back then to the unanswered question. Okay. Be, be a real pain in the butt, you know. You're not satisfied, right? They really should have gone over this. They, I wanted more about that. That session was only a half hour long. I wanted it three hours. Well, all right. You know, I right. mean, you know, Will. All right. So Will Wright could have spoken like all day. Honestly, I mean, okay. it, it seemed to me. It seemed to me like. <laughs> Did he do like, like three hours, or he did an hour? But I mean, seriously, it seemed like oh. it was like like oh, my time's up. You know, my hour's up, and I gotta go. <laughs> I'm like, it, he every ten to fifteen seconds was something new. He kept hitting you so, with so many single rights with knowledge. You never felt the left coming at you on the next slide. You just, I mean, it was just insane. It was like watching like a master rapper in full flow just keep on going, pummeling you with knowledge for an hour. I, mean, I was loopy by the end of it, but God, I mean, he could have gone all day. He could have gone all day. I just hope to God that they recorded it and they're going to they're going to release the video because uh, I mean, you you just got to see it to believe it. From a nerd standpoint, it doesn't get better than that. Um, uh, I would say that putting me to speak after Will Wright sucked. That sucked. <laughs> yes, you were tweeting about that. Yes. Oh God, I mean, I mean, I was just. You know, I mean, the, 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 I'm surprised I found any kind of flow even after 20 minutes. I mean, honestly, it was, I feel really bad for the people in the room the first 10 or 15 minutes because it was painful. It was painful for me. I had no idea what was going on. Uh, I, uh, you know, uh, I, the, the Wi-Fi didn't work with uh, my iPhone and Keynote, so all of a sudden, while I had, I I should have thought of a backup plan for not <laughs> running the presentation off of my phone, but I didn't, because um, it all was working according to plan. So <laughs> until it wasn't, um, so yeah, that that the whole pre, the whole schematics around the the pres, the my actual presentation, uh, I wish that could have been better, but uh, but but it is what it is, and people got something out of it, so okay. Number two. Why don't you uh, tell me a little bit? Oh, go ahead. Why don't you tell me about your presentation? What was the main point for your presentation? I have uh, I have a plan for cycling and cycling communication in the organization and channeling it uh, in specific ways, uh, so that we can draw a direct we can draw connections. Uh, that cycle from social networking to knowledge management to formal learning uh, and you know conti and continue the flow of information in that way and so you have from social networking to knowledge management you bridge that gap with communities of practice okay so social networking is like the the cafeteria or the lobby in your organization okay Everybody talks, everybody hangs out. You can have a conversation with anybody, right? Um, if okay. somebody's sitting at the next table from you that's talking about you know, the Lakers game you know, from the other night, you could jump in on that conversation. If somebody else is talking about supply chain you know, practices you know, and you're into supply chain, you could talk to those people and just jump in on that conversation. So it's a way for people to start to actually meet each other and talk to each other and not in versus always being you know, presented with a new face only when a project demands it by your leader. You know? And then you have no real connection to the, to the person that's on your project, and they have no investment in you, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So social networking can take care of a lot of different communications, and it answers questions like, what is good? this is what works for me. If you ask me a question, I can tell you this is what works for me. And you might get several answers like that. Eventually, though, people want to actually, people with affinity groups or professional affiliations, um, they want to group together. I mean, people just tend to want to group together. And when they group together with, you know, similar interests in a, in a workplace setting, they tend to want to start doing projects. Well, social network, social, a social networking site, a sharing site, uh, where the sharing is just built in by default, you know, the sharing of information. Um, like Twitter, like a Yammer, like Flickr even. Um, 
they're really good for conversations, broad conversations. They're not really good for group focused conversations. They're not really good for coordination or cooperation. Excuse me. They're really not good for collaboration because it's just there's too much noise going on. It'd be like having a work work meeting in the middle of your cafeteria where you're actually trying to come up with a deliverable, you know? So you need you need to have like a meeting room. You need to have a separate space where the, where you're, there can be some scheduling, some coordination support for you guys, some document exchange, maybe some shared document spaces where you guys can actually work together on, on you know, you know, ad hoc documentation, you know, mm-hmm. of any kind, um, messaging, lots of different types of messaging, things like that. Um, you know, that gets that supports collaboration, and that's where I'm, that's where I'm resting communities of practice. Working together, whether it's an affinity group or just a professional affiliation, you can get groups that will start pounding out the the kinds of information that you know as artisans of a particular craft. You know, whether it's uh, plumbers or salespeople or whatever, you know, they'll put produce the documents for an organization that guide them in their practices. So that when when they're faced with questions, whether they're in social networks or wherever else, they'll say, "Well, instead of saying this is what works for me, they'll they'll start saying this is what works for us," and that's a very distinct difference. Um, but they're doing that work makes it e- very easy then for knowledge management professionals in the organization, people who are charged with the document retention and document management and the policies and procedures of an organization, you know, all the compliance things, to start. You know, harvesting that information, you know, and make it official and put it in places where everybody can generally get access to what they need to know. Um, And that helps then, you know, that help can be provided in terms of performance support tools, job aids, things like that, reference tools. Um, And then your formal learning aspect then is a very, you know, they're filling in those gaps. They are look, they're looking at metrics then is all this electronic communication is starting to happen, it could all be measured, it could all be analyzed, and they could see what information is constantly being retrieved from, the, from people in the organization, uh-huh. all right? And they could look to why, because if, they're spend, if people continue to spend time accessing the same types of information, then that, it, that, that to me, I think to most people, would identify itself as a gap that can be filled through uh-huh. you know, a prescriptive, a prescriptive training. Then you, you evaluate and just let the process kind of unveil something new to do. But so this this plan that I have is really more about continuous improvement. So it, it just as much as it is, uh, you know, actual you know communication exchange. But that's that was the focus of my presentation. It was introducing that idea and specifically focusing on social networking and communities of practice and uh, because they. Those are compelling stories that I could actually tell from as case examples of what we're doing and what's working. <laughs>